featuring the home debut of their new head coach, Terry Nichol. A pleasant good evening, everyone. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Alongside me is Seamus Mallon. Goalkeeping, as always, should play a major part in this game. And you look at a contrast, Seamus. Dallas being led by someone that they knew would be there all season, but the Wings have a surprise in goal. Yes, indeed. Dallas, unfortunate, uh, fortunately for them, have two excellent goalkeepers, Joe Papaleo and Chris Sobieski. We'll see Sobieski tonight, an all-star for two years, a superb player. He's had a, a couple of really good wins of late. And actually, some of the matches he's lost on the road, he's also been outstanding in. So he's the number one man for them. On the other hand, Ziggy Zagante, a man who came out of nowhere, literally. Nobody around here seems to know where he came from. He now, all of a sudden, is the man in the net, says Matt Kennedy is struggling a bit. He had two superb wins out on the coast as they finally broke that jinx on the away record, beating uh, Los Angeles and San Diego. So here's their man tonight. And offensively, a couple of big guns missing from last year. A tattoo on one side, Borja on the other. But other guys have to pick up the slack. Yes, indeed. I must say, uh, a very good acquisition by Dallas and getting Godfrey Ingram, who was, um, you no, know, nobody's going to fill tattoo shoes, but Godfrey Ingram is a very experienced player. He gives him that piece of flair up front. He scored some goals from him late. He's very important. Now, Dave Hogan is not a name that's known very well around the league, but he also is on a tear of late, and he's taken up some of the slack that Borja's absence has left. We'll watch for those two players and more tonight. Terry Nichols' home debut. The kickoff is next from Wichita. Okay, sports fans, who's going to win big in Super Bowl 22? Six, they have a winning record in this building. And I tell you, this is a very tough building for visiting teams to do well in but they have done well here. I want to remind everyone that the MISL referees, as you look at them there, are sponsored by Elite's Performance Footwear, Elite's the newest name in quality soccer shoes. And Elite soccer shoes are worn by many of your favorite MISL stars. Elite's Performance Footwear, where soccer enters a new age. Essie Baharvis and Brian Hall will work the game on the floor. Alan Shepard is the third official. We're underway, the coaching debut at home of X-Wings midfielder Terry Nicholson. He got a thunderous ovation. The building was literally shaking when he was introduced earlier. Gene Wirtz, the ex-San Diego soccer in the neutral zone, back for Mike Fox. Wings in the predominant white. Normally they wear the predominant orange at home. Those are their basic colors, the orange, blue, and white. Flicked into the box and Stride clears it out. Sent back in by Mike Fox and it hops over the glass. Goal kick coming up for Chris Sobieski and the Dallas sidekick. Sobieski, second straight year that he is named to the MISL Eastern Division All-Star team. Here's Terry Nickel, the well-dressed coach of the Wichita Wings. Had a good career here, very popular here as a player and as a front office person as well as their community relations director, so it was a popular move when he came here replacing Charlie Cook. Sobieski, out of his goal. A little pressure put on by Rasmussen. Played up the right side, Godfrey Ingram. Now for Kevin Smith, who leads the club in assists. Left side stride, back for Mike Powers. Back the other way it goes. And it's Smith again. Sidekicks, move it up the floor for Ingram, who just had a four-game goal-scoring streak and a six-game streak snap. Played into Powers. Couldn't control it, but an easy goal for Mike Jeffries. Oh, a superb play by Dallas. Just exactly what they talked about you must do on the road. That is control the ball and just work it about and don't do anything silly like rush forward unexpectedly. They made their forward rush at exactly the right time. Got a, got a good player breaking behind the defense and then the easy touch in. Here you'll see the end of it. Very well taken. The touch over and an easy goal in the end for Mike Jeffries. But uh, the importance there was the timing of Mike Jeffries' run and uh, the initial ball played in uh, for the first touch. And the green you saw in the crowd are, are close to 100 fans, maybe more, from the Dallas area that have come here to make this trip. And if anything can stop a crowd and get them out of a game, it's a goal early. 108 there, that silenced this wings faithful, at least for the moment. Up the right side, Terry Rowe against Victor Moreland. Played back on the left side for Hagen. This building holds 9,650. I don't see any empty seats. There might be a few, but they were down to single tickets hours before kickoff. Right side, Cooley, the assistant coach. Right side boards, Mickey Thomas. Cooley keeps it back in for Hagen. Points in 11 out of his last 13 games, including a game winner against Los Angeles a week ago. Terry Rowe back with it to Cooley on the right side. In deep, Mickey Thomas. Picked up by Doc Lawson. One of three players who started 10 years ago in this league and still going strong. Keith Van Aaron and Dave McKenzie are the others. He'll be out next week at the All-Star game in Tacoma. 
Mike Stankovic being chased back by Victor Moreland. Play back to the feet of Zagante. Dallas wanted to come out fast and attack the wings, trying to make something happen. But even that might have been wishful thinking to think Jamison did score just over a minute. Yeah, uh, an attack, but attack in the intelligent way that they are doing now that they've lost Tattoo. That is attack uh, with good composure, good passing, and uh, also probably a little bit more conservative to be sure that there's somebody at the back and not sending too many forward at once. Stankovic now plays it up the left side. And now the wings settle it. one nothing. the lead belongs to the Dallas sidekicks. They've won eight out of their last ten against the wings. Dave Hagen against Stride. Plays it out for Cooley. 50-footer blocked straight up, and it will go out of play. And right now, there's a timeout on the floor. 12 minutes, five seconds to go. Still in the opening quarter, the only goal of the game. Jeffries at 108. Dallas leads by one. It's time for lifestyles of the original party animal with the grand poobar of partyometry, Bud Light's own Spud McKenzie, as he's planning tonight's big bash. His fans watch as he tans his way to party elegance. A facial and massage, and Spud McKenzie is ready to party. And Spud's parties with only Bud Light. He knows everything else is just a light. Jeffries with the only goal of the game thus far. And that goal, by the way, is seventh of the year. He had only six all of last year. So Jeffries already surpassing last year's goal scored. He still has the rest of the season to go. On the right side, DeBrito plays it in. Now to Eric Rasmussen. Turning, shooting it. Block short side. So he has coming in his box. And it's broken up. And down the left wing side, Jeffries looks for it. But it's cleared all the way back down the floor by Gary Stanley. Out for his first shift of the night. Left side, DeBrito. Two goals, two assists. Four points against San Diego on Wednesday. DeBrito, the ex sidekick, going against his former mates, up for Woolrich. Likewise, Powers is an ex wing going up against ex teammates. Rasmussen shot wide. Fox in the rebound. Out to Rasmussen, the club's top scorer. Rasmussen, right footer, great save. Sobieski to the right. He won a couple of nice fakes, though, by Eric Rasmussen. Oh, terrific fakes indeed. He moved uh, Mike Jeffries out of there beautifully with a fake to the left, opening up some space in the middle for the shot. Up the left wing side, boards intended for Jeffries, knocked out of play by Gary Stanley. A restart coming up here for Dallas from the near boards, and Kevin Smith will be taking it. Happy birthday, by the way, to Doc Lawson, who turned 30 years old yesterday. There's Gary Stanley. He had some hamstring problems earlier, just getting back into the lineup for Wichita. Kevin Smith will be putting in play. Gene Woodward's giving him the 10 feet required. Back out now to West McLeod. For the doctor, Lawson against Stankovic. Two veterans to the boards. And Lawson pushed away there. Well, interesting to see Doc Lawson in the league 10 years, but still feeling enough confidence, uh, JP, in his speed to see uh, some space behind Stankovic and put the Jets on to try to go by him. I thought they called that on Dallas. They did not. It was on Stankovic. So Lawson will take it. One foul the other way. Nothing on the board for Dallas in terms of fouls. It's a one nothing lead. Dallas deflected over on the far side, and Lawson will get it. Clears it all the way to the feet of Sobieski. Chris Sobieski, left footing it long. Wants Ingram, headed back by Stanley. Lawson there to get it out of danger. Takes a bump from Woolrich. And now Lawson smartly plays it all the way back to Sobieski. This time he right foots it for Jeffries. Leaving it off for Godfrey Ingram. Ingram cutting to the outside. Now back in and then out against DeBrito. Lost the ball in the corner. He may get it back. He wanted to get it out for Kevin Smith. Smith may still get it, but Stanley came in. Still one nothing Dallas. Stanley in some trouble. Gets it for Rasmussen. Playing deep. He was taken down in a foul. Quick restart. Smart play up for Mickey Thomas. He's got a man to beat. It's Powers. Thomas has to wait for some help. Mickey Thomas now plays it through into the corner for Hagen. Testing it down, working against Rudwanski. Out it comes. Cooley in for Thomas. Played back out for Terry Rowe. Rowe coming through. Hagen wanting to turn against Stride. Played it in. Rowe blocked it, but Powers may have saved the score. Stankovic to the left side. Mickey Thomas fakes. Goes to the outside on Rudwanski. Rudwanski now putting some pressure on as it's cut out nicely. Out for Cooley at the point. In for Hagen, wanting to turn. Plays it out instead of the left side, Stankovic. To the outside, left footer, save, rebound is in there. It's tied at one. Wichita gets the equalizing goal. Mickey Thomas 
also low. Radlonski, the defender, by the touch of Ayo Stankovic with a fierce shot into the melee in front. And I thought it hit Radlonski and went in, but uh, Thomas was right there in the goal line. Let's see what the official scorer said. But let's hear it. maybe this angle will help us a little bit. A good drive by Stankovic. You see it go across the goal, off the keeper. And yes, it does. It hit the thigh on the hand of Radwanski and went into his own goal. So Mike Stankovic at 5.33 will get credit for the goal as the ball is coming all the way back into the sidekick zone. So Bieski will play it there for Stankovic. It'll be his 13th goal of the season. He has now scored at least a point in eight straight games as Dallas loses possession of the ball. 9.21 to go here in the opening quarter. Tied at one. The sidekicks not been able to get a lot of the important goals this year and obviously they have to do without tattoo Gordon Jago talked about it yes it has changed that style because when you lose somebody like tattoo it's really difficult what we've become now whereas tattoo held the ball and we joined we've now become much more of a movement side a running team and a good passing team and uh, that has taken a little bit of time in terms of adjustment back in the action Ingram bumped by Kevin Culey Ingram to the left. Now for Mark Carpin. Broken up. Mike Fox will get it. A 1-1 tie. Stankovic from Mickey Thomas at 5-33. Mike Fox to midfield. Up for Hagen. Kicked straight up by Wes McLeod. And Lawson heads it back. All the way back for Sobieski. Sobieski last year the goalkeeper of the year in the major indoor soccer league. One of the reasons why Dallas is still in the thick of things, even without tattoo, is because they can come out with Sobieski in goal or Papaleo, two great goalkeepers. Uh, Sobieski's going to be unhappy with that goal he gave up, uh, obviously. Any goal he gives up, but uh, that one in particular, because he did get a hand on the first shot from Stankovic and, uh, and gave the rebound up in front. Of course, one of the critical aspects of goalkeeping indoors is not to give up rebounds. I mean, just as an ice hockey, you don't want to give up the, the ball or the puck in front of the net. And unfortunately, he did went in on his own defender. But even had it not, Mike uh, Mickey Tallis was there with a good chance to tie it up. Zagandi with a toss on the left side, and it's Eric Rasmussen. Rasmussen losing it. Powers is there. Mike Powers comes from a family of 13 children. Right side, Redwanski taken down, but DeBrito got the ball first. Apparently, up for Willrich. Knocked back for Mike Fox. Now it's Gary Stanley. Cutting on Rodwanski. Left for Mike Fox. He's got Willrich back to help out against Victor Moreland. Going long, Stanley dummied that ball. He thought someone else was there. And now Powers takes it. Left side for David Stride. Stride up the left wing. Mike Jeffries, who started things off and went away with his goal. Now it's Stride across the way to Powers. Tied at one, 7.35 to go in the opening quarter from Wichita. Ingram dancing to the right side boards. Off the boards, Stankovic is there, toes it out, but Ingram will get it back. Left side, Stride, tees it up and look out as that one went out of play. So, goals by Jeffries for the Dallas sidekicks and Stankovic for the wings. We're all even at one. Keep, uh... Bring these players here, he acquired them. What kind of a coaching challenge does this present to him? We talked to him before the game. Okay. Well, the number of factors that I could um, affect, if you like, is to affect morale. Um, I needed to really come in very quickly. I've got this squad from now to the end of the season. I wanted them to really play to maximum. It was my job to get the best out of these, these players. And um, I thought by giving them extra confidence, they would go out and express themselves more. I really can't affect the style of play so much because uh, I didn't have the time. Um, I've really play, I like to play with a defensive midfielder and that helps. But really all I've done is try and motivate the players and get them enjoying playing again and really express themselves. Terry Nickel, who just this week was named the coach of the year of the American Indoor Soccer Association, second straight year as he guided Memphis the past two seasons. Back in the action, it's a 1-1 tie as Terry Rowe gives it up for the goalkeeper, Ninan Zagante, or Ziggy, as they call him here. Hagen finds Stankovic. Stankovic looks to see what he's got, gives it right side to Kuehling. Kuehling has played in more games than any member of the Wichita Wings, and now it's Thomas coming back. Good effort to win it back. Thomas will take it from Rowe. Mickey Thomas ahead for Hagen. 
Dave Hagen giving it up for Stankovic. The ex-Baltimore Blast. Nice tackle, Victor Moreland. Sidekicks captain comes away with it. Moreland, well known for his work as a defender, but he's been a midfielder since towards the end of last season. Ball played back to Sobieski, and he comes away against Hagen. Stolen away, Stankovic. Hagen can't get it, and Sobieski pounces on it. And a mistake almost cost the sidekicks dearly. We've got a foul, though, on Dallas. The shots on goal show the sidekicks with a big 6-1 edge. Uh, Re Wichita, restart here. Uh, Wichita getting a goal without a shot since it was a long goal. A Thomas one. That may have hit off Hagen, although Sobieski was right there. And now Ingram back the other way. Off the boards for Morla. Moreland looking in a space. He wants Wes McLeod coming back to help out of Stankovic. Looks to send it the other way to Hagen in midfield. Broken up by Powers. Hagen trying to stay with it. But now it's Kevin Smith. An original sidekick. Smith puts the brakes on. Finds Mike Jeffries. He had the goal. It started in a one away and a right footed shot. He almost got it oh. off. Unlucky. Oh, boy. Unlucky. And an unorthodox attempt to save there by, Z by Ziggy. And he's got to be very, very fortunate to have gotten that one back off the friendly post. Terry Rowe now clears it all the way back. Stankovic gives it back to his goalkeeper. Dallas complaining that that one came back from the neutral zone, which would have been an infraction and a loss of the ball. Here's Carpen shooting it wide. Oh. DeBrito with it. Mm, not a good shot by Mark Carpen. Pedro DeBrito looking. He almost sprung Woolrich. Here comes DeBrito, but Sobieski's got a beat on this one as he clears it up over midfield. Two players up in the air to miss that one as Stankovic. Looks to gain possession against Rodwatsky. Plays it back to Zagante. He, like most new goalkeepers, had a problem with those shots off the boards and the rebounds. As Stride takes down Rasmussen, he'll sit for two. Well, great skill by Rasmussen. Rasmussen, knowing that Stride was coming in, knowing that Stride likes to play physically, really drew that penalty by the quick touch on the ball and the quick turn. So as David Stride sits it out, the Wings will have a power play. When we return, we get another look as we go to the break. Hi, I'm John Lose. And I'm Randy Hahn, inviting you to watch Missile Week every week. John here for the Wings. Hagen plays it out. Get it, got it back from Stankovic. Out to Rasmussen. Rodwatsky chasing him there. Rasmussen against Eddie Rodwatsky to the left side. Stankovic in a 1-1 tie. Back for Rasmussen. 140 on the power play. Hagen gives it up for Stankovic. Pressured there by Smith. Sidekick's penalty killing unit works real hard out there. They've got some good speed, good skill as it's played across. Doesn't go through. Stankovic, far side. Giving it up now for Rasmussen. Holding it against Rodwatsky. Top of the arc. Nice cut. Left footer. Wide off the side of the boards and Rodwanski comes back and his first professional goal it was a shorthanded goal the sidekicks unit they used to call him the no score four right now they rank sixth in the league and killing penalties at 69 percent Stankovic to the left side Rasmussen back for Stankovic Rasmussen in his third year with the wings right across they find Woolrich with four power play goals out to Stankovic again to Rasmussen in the far corner Trying to find someone over with a free shot. Maybe it's Willrich the drive, and it's blocked out by Powers. Back out for Willrich. 38 seconds of the man advantage. Toes it to the right side. A Thomas drive off the crossbar. Both sides unlucky. If you go back, Jeffries, you remember, hit one off the inside of the post for Dallas. Here's Willrich from Rasmussen. In the corner, Thomas. He was blocked by Powers, and he sends this one the other way. It stays in play. Rasmussen, nice skills to keep that one alive. Stankovic, 15 seconds of the man advantage with Stride sitting it out. Left footer, and that one goes upstairs, but someone got a piece, and a corner kick will take place. A dangerous opportunity here. Tacoma and Chicago tied at one. That's in the second quarter of play. Other games going on. San Diego in St. Louis leads it two to nothing after the Steamers had a big 3 1 win last night in Cleveland. A little bit later on tonight, Kansas City with five in a row going against LA. 1 1 tie here. Dallas and Wichita, 12 seconds left on the penalty on that man, David Stride. He had 20 penalty minutes coming in. That'll give him 22. He's gone several games without any penalty minutes. Ball is played back now to Zagante. David Stride comes to play. Homer away doesn't really matter. Right side, Hagen. Stride's penalty is over. Left wing side, here's Rasmussen. 
Eric shot scooped up by Sobieski. That shot was moving. Oh, it was moving. And Rasmussen is such a good striker of the ball. He keeps it nice and low a lot so that it comes quickly to the goalkeeper from between players' legs or among the just a forest of players' legs. Ball played back now to Zagante. Left side, Mike Fox. Carpenter picking him up. Putting some high pressure on against the wing's defense. Willich almost lost it. Look at how far up Lawson is playing. Lawson and Ingram up top. Now they get it to Rasmussen. Great outlet feed. Now on the left wing. Willich trying to knock it free, making another crack at it. Willich on his right foot. Trying to back heel it. Stanley doesn't read it. But now he'll get it anyway. Mickey Karavich, his first shift. He's blocked. Taken back by Stanley. Does the stutter step now, plays it back to the neutral zone, and Willrich is there. 2.13 to go in the opening quarter of play. And it's a 1-1 one -one tie. Mark Curlin on his first shift of the night. To Zagante now right side, Mike Fox. Picked up by Carpen and Rudwanski. Intended for Curlin, Kevin Smith outraces Curlin to the ball. He may get this back from Rudwanski. Kevin Smith in the corner. He and Curlin battle. In a 1-1 one -one tie, it's blocked by Curlin. Knocked back by David Stride. Off the boards, Carpen. Try to find Smith. He had him. Had him open. Wings will get it. A 1-1 tie. Rodwatsky hits the deck. Now Fox and Carpet hit it as well. And they call Carpet on that foul. That's the fourth foul of the Dallas sidekick. So they're picking him up in a hurry. Good piece of uh, body strength here by Carpet getting by Rodwatsky. First steeled himself for the challenge. Couldn't quite steal himself for this challenge, though, as he's very obviously floored. But he did very well to get away from Rodwatsky by just uh, being a little bit tougher on the body check. Gary Stanley against Rodwanski. Up for Karavich, who played last year in Baltimore. Broken up by Espinoza. His first shift of the night as well as he gives it up for Sobieski. 122 left in the opening quarter of play. It's a 1-1 time. Dallas scored first. Jeffries with his seventh goal of the year from Mike Powers. And then at 5.33, Stankovic with his 13th of the year from Thomas that actually went in, at least looked like it did on the replay, off of Rodwanski. Well, no, no question about it. We know Rodwanski, but Stankovic gets credit for the goal. Sobieski wandering. Picked off by Stanley as Sobieski retreats. He has plenty of time, though, to get back. Mike Fox with it. Less than a minute to go. Fox up now for Hagen. Right at midfield. Back for Fox, and then Hagen makes a run. But Fox can't find him. Instead, he almost found Carpet. Good pressure here by Carpet. Played up by Stanley. Here comes Sobieski at the edge of the box against his ex-teammate DeBrito. 36 seconds left in the quarter. Tied at one. Right side pass by Smith is blocked. Stanley in the corner for DeBrito. 28 seconds left. A 1-1 tie here at the Kansas Coliseum in Wichita as Hagen takes it. Up over midfield. Down to 20 seconds. Stankovic. To the outside on Jeffries. Down to 13 seconds, a left footer, but it's right at Sobieski. Stankovic's new time was running down. Eight seconds left as Lawson brings it up the floor. Lawson from midfield, three seconds. He'll lose it there to Stankovic. Time will run out. That's it for the first 15 minutes. One goal by Jeffries, one goal by Stankovic before a tremendous crowd here in Wichita. It's even at one. That's tough. Everybody's got to feel the pressure. They want to do well here at home, especially since they won two games on the road. And Gordon Jago knew that. He knew they would be flying coming out, so he wanted to try and nullify that, put some pressure on early, and he got a good result with that goal at 108. Second quarter begins as DeBrito finds Stanley. Being pressured the other way. 11 shots to one in favor of Wichita that last quarter. Played back, and now it's Zagante, who didn't have a save in the first quarter compared to six for Sobieski. Up for Rasmussen. Nice turn against Powers. Gets by him. Eric Rasmussen with a chance. Played it in front. It was blocked. Good opportunity for the Wings to take the go-ahead goal. Oh, and Godfrey Ingram really doing a great job defensively there as uh, Gene Wilrich was running into the center of the goal and went just a little bit too far into the penalty area. And Ingram uh, scrambling that one away. So good defensive play by a man who's supposed to do their scoring for them. David Stride has powers beside him. Dallas really slowing it down here. Well, now Stride will play it back to Sobieski. All of a sudden, the game really slows down. It's intended for Carpet, and it comes all the way back to Zagante. Now to Mike Fox. Fox puts it in his face well for Hagen off the boards. Again, Stride. Hagen to the middle. 
Hagen again, working against two players, knocked away by Carpet. In comes DeBrito, cuts it over. He took a nice hit from Carpet. They're going to call. Well, they didn't call it. They just let it go with the advantage. They were going to stop play. Up for Fox. Now to Hagen. Hagen on the right side. Back out for DeBrito in a 1 1 tie. DeBrito gives it up to Fox. Ingram putting some pressure on. Up the side, Powers slipping down, finds Ingham trying to give it back, and there's an obvious foul. And two minutes, actually, good. because DeBrito did yeah. stop an advantage. Powers sure would have been by him. Very good decision by the yeah. referee. Excellent call, because, yes, it was an obstruction, but it was an obstruction that took away a tremendous uh, fast break opportunity. We'll see a good touch in now. You see he's uh, blocking him, and if Ingram could just get this ball and the give and go back, then uh, the player making the cut uh, would have been off and running towards the goal, almost unobstructed. So, indeed, a fine decision by the referee to send DeBrito to the box for two minutes and another power play opportunity for Wichita. Well, DeBrito going to the box. I mean, excuse me, <laughs> the power, power play. <laughs> keep forgetting who DeBrito is playing for now. DeBrito used to be with Dallas, not with Dallas anymore. He's with Wichita, so it's a power play the other way. And the sidekicks power play shame is struggle until Carpenter scored a goal against Baltimore a couple games back they had gone 0 for 12 since that time they've gone four for six Kevin Smith will put it in play right side to Doc Lawson back for Smith plays it over to the right side Lawson in the corner Ingram who leads the club with five power play goals Ingram shooting it and Zagate will stop that one at the short side Play back the other way. And it goes right out of play, right by the Wichita Wings bench. Sidekicks will put the ball back in play. Kevin Smith over in front of that Wichita Wings bench to do the honors. Smith bothered by a bad left ankle, but out there doing the best he can. Over on the right side, Lawson. Played earlier with Philadelphia and New York. Other stops in the MISL. On the left side, Kevin Smith. Power play on for Dallas. Lawson in the corner. Ingram right across, and he missed. Zagante stretched, but it wasn't that close to him. Kevin Smith the other way with a minute 15 left in the power play. Lawson to Ingram. Ingram's pass is blocked, and it's cleared out of there by the Wings, who are using Perlin, Fox, Mark Evans for the first time tonight. And Kulik, right side Lawson, into the corner. Played across, and that's blocked. And speaking of Evans, he's another X side kick. Played all the way across, David Stride. Settles it. Kevin Smith again. Against Curlin. Left side for Stride. Back out for Smith. 43 seconds left. Side kicks continue to work it around, trying to settle it down for the good shot. Ingram back for Lawson. Stride trying to get free by the far post. Lawson directs everything to the right side. Now they play it across. Smith couldn't control it. Now Stride whacks it hard off Zagante's hands. That one stung him as he stopped it on the short side. A corner kick coming up for Godfrey Ingram. 11.46 to go here in the second quarter. Power play on for another 27 seconds. Seven seconds left on the power play. Corner kick spot. Kevin Smith will do the honors for Dallas. Looking, leading a deflection. Carpenter looking for it, but a handball. Handball is going to be called. Penalty. Let's see where they're going to put it. If they're not going to call it intentional, they're going to bring it up by the arc. Top of the arc. 34 feet out. Well, I thought initially he was pointing inside to the penalty spot, but he was pointing to the one at the uh, top of the arc here. But Dallas is appealing it what they're calling he did call for a handball Kevin Smith will put it in play Smith will give it up on the far side a shot saves a guy they off carpet turn the other way here's Perlin against Sobieski and he won it that's really an outstanding play by Sobieski he risks his life on that play well here's the the restart again 
and the block uh, at the end of it, which causes, of course, the uh, the quick counterattack, cleared out of there very fast. And so Bieski has to make a very fast decision. It comes out and intelligently just uh, sweeps it off to the left side. Because into the crowd, the crowd actually hoping for a delay of game penalty there, but it was a, a quick 50-50 challenge the referees decided, and not necessarily an, an intentional uh, uh, delay of game by kicking to the crowd. Dallas trying to calm one another down on the bench. I think what they're arguing about is you're not supposed to call a handball unless it's an intentional. And if it was intentional, then you're saying it's a deliberate foul, yeah. thus the penalty kick. I believe that's what their argument is. Moreland coming back the other way. Right side boards for Lawson. Two seconds up to the power play. Sidekick's coming up empty. And now DeBrito's back on. Lawson banging to the boards. And now foul on the wings. Well, excuse me, JP. Everything seemed to me in that power play to be going through Ingram, an awful lot of it in the early part of it. And Godfrey uh, was not able to get much in the way of a, a penetrating pass in the penalty area. And so that uh, took away a lot of the possibilities. When they switched to the far side with stride, they got a bit more direct play, but nothing very subtle there either. Well, Ingram set the record last year with 17 power play goals, so it's only natural that they've looked for him. Here's Lawson right across, blocked in front by Kulik. Fox on the left wing. Mike Fox back the other way, and Cooley will pick it up. One time wings captain. Now they play player, assistant coach. Right side, Terry Rowe. Carpen slows him down. Rowe spins free. Over the line he comes. Terry Rowe blocked there by Moreland and picked up by Sobieski. Quickly he looks to get things going, Rodwanski. And Thomas blocked it. Rodwanski says handball, but the officials say no. And back comes Fox. Mike Fox, top of the arc, a shot. Scores NCAA basketball season goes for the Longhorn State. Southwest Conference action, Texas battles Houston in an interstate rivalry. Saturday, February 13th at 8.30 Eastern. Catch the best of college basketball on FNN Score. Hi, I'm Byron Day, and if you're like me, you live sports. Well, FNN Score was designed for people like us. Score brings you the first complete wrap-up of the sports day on the final score. So join me Monday through Saturday at 11 o'clock Eastern for complete sports coverage on the final score. Once every four years, something happens in this country. Once every four years, the Olympics come to America. And once every four years, we all come together. Budweiser is proud to help bring the Olympics to America. Good picture. And Americans closer together. Sports fans, grab a sharp pencil, hang on to your hats. Here's another great sports package offer. Wouldn't you love to have been there to see the great Babe Ruth in action? Or watch Jolton Joe DiMaggio hit it out of the park? Or see Willie Mays make that classic catch in the 1954 World Series? If so, then you'll definitely want to order this Baseball Legends package. This library of eight videotapes will provide hours of sports entertainment. You'll also see Hank Aaron, Mickey Mantle, Stan Musial, Ted Williams, and Roberto Clemente up close and personal. If you could find these items in a store, you'd expect to pay over $170, but our price is just $99.95. And if you order now, you'll receive these suitable for framing pictures of each great player. Want more? Okay, you'll also get baseball's 50 greatest games, including the 1923 World Series and Jackie Robinson's first game. Eight videos, eight pictures, and the book, $99.95. Don't wait. Call 1-800-962-2962 and ask for your Baseball Legends package. It's time to warm up from the cold and get indoors as SCORE heats your winter nights with the hot action of MISL soccer. Follow the excitement every week as SCORE takes you through the playoffs. This week, the San Diego Soccers meet the Baltimore Blast live Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Hi, I'm Byron Day, and if you're like me, you live sports. Well, Effin and SCORE was designed for people like us. SCORE brings you the first complete wrap-up of the sports day on the final score. So join me Monday through Saturday at 11 o'clock Eastern for complete sports coverage on the final score. Grass 
Magnuson, Mike Fox, and Mike Stanger. It's actually three unanswered goals after Mike Jeffries had scored earlier in the game at 108 of the first quarter. Second half is just underway, basically. Just a couple of minutes old as Zagante throws long. Hagen heads it on to Mickey Thomas's run. Thomas against Powers. Plays it across on the left. Hewley. Back for Mike Stankovic. Stankovic. One on goals by Eric Rasmussen, Mike Fox, and Mike Stankovic. Actually, three unanswered goals after Mike Jeffries had scored earlier in the game at 108 of the first quarter. Second half is just underway, basically. Just a couple of minutes old as Zagante throws long. Hagen heads it on to Mickey Thomas's run. Thomas against Powers. Plays it across on the left. Hewley. Back for Mike Stankovic. Stankovic, an outstanding counter, whether he's in the midfield or at the back. Up it goes for Rowe. Terry Rowe. Holding it against Carpet. Straight out for Cooley. Left side, Thomas. Blocked on the play. Carpet tripped up by Rowe. And that's two. That's going to cost him two. Because Carpet would have been by him. And I'm going to agree totally with that call. I think the replay would bear that out. Well, it's another one that we saw similar to in the fence before, but uh, very definitely two minutes there. Yeah, very late tackle as he's breaking away. So Rowe will go off for tripping, and when we come back, the sidekicks with a great chance here on the power play. They need two to tie. In these days of microcomponent technology, he's farther away. And it looks like a handball from uh, our vantage point, too. Powers now for Lawson. Dallas power play didn't click all that well in their first opportunity. They were passing it around trying to get an open shot, but they couldn't make that through ball and get someone open or isolate it. See if they do it here. Smith to Lawson. They just brought Ingram on, though. Ingram in the right side. Right in for Carpet. Turning for Jeffries, and he couldn't get a good angle as it goes out of play, but Zagante got a touch on that. Had Jeffries got that ball a little bit sooner, I don't think uh, Zagante would have been able to do anything. You're right, uh, but here's Lawson with the ball into Ingram now. It's a very dangerous man all the time. He puts this one across. Uh, not a very good first touch, but he does do well to get it the second time. But what a fine save by the keeper. Here's Carpet shooting it. That's blocked by DeBrito. Teammates a year ago with Dallas. DeBrito's got a championship ring from the sidekicks. Here's Ingram. Back out for Lawson. A minute to go on the power play. Lawson with a blast. It's broken up. Ingram back for it. So is Lawson. As is DeBrito, but now it's Lawson getting control. Down to 49 seconds. Sidekicks with not many good chances here. Jeffries might have had the best, and he would have liked that ball sooner. Ingram from Smith. Right side, Lawson. Right across, save. Rebound, Jeffries. Hit off by Fox. Lawson's shot is blocked, and it goes out. Dallas was unlucky. That hit Fox as opposed to him blocking. That's right. Jeffries shaking his head. That one should have been in. Here's Ingram. His shot saves Zagante. Lost it in the corner. Now the sidekicks put the pressure on. But DeBrito takes it away. 22 seconds left in the power play. Fox plays it back for Mark Evans. Lifting it. Intended for Fox. He got around Smith. Sobieski, though, knocks it away. Mike Jeffries now coming back. Eight seconds left in the power play. A 3-1 wings lead here. 10.25 to go in the third. Smith, left side, Jeffries holding it. The penalty's over on Rowe, he's back on. Smith to Ingram, right side, Lawson. Left foot to the cross, Jeffries can't settle now, does for Ingram. Godfrey, right footer, just missing as Zagante appeared to get a hand on it. Coming in wide and blasted out of there by DeBrito, and that goes in the third row of seats. They're gonna call that a deliberate clear play so the ball goes to the top of the arc as DeBrito walks off and gets a breather. We'd like to say hello by the way to Tattoo watching the game in Dallas. He had a staple removed from his right leg and we understand he's doing well on the road to recovery. We wish him well. We hope he's enjoying tonight's game. Coming up this week in the major indoor soccer league, Chicago at Baltimore on Saturday, Tacoma at Cleveland. Then Cleveland goes to Minnesota Sunday, St. Louis at Dallas, LA at Wichita, KC at San Diego. Kevin Smith on the restart. Giving it up McLeod, and it's blocked by Hagen. McLeod heads it back in for Carpet. Looking, broken up. Stankovic lifting it. Hagen has to wait as he backpedals. He's joined now by Thomas. Oh, Hagen. <laughs> what was that? As it's cleared back to Sobieski. That was an ad lib, wasn't it? Ingram with it. Ingram 
trying to get by Thomas. Now they play leapfrog. Now, is there a foul for leapfrog in this book, in this game? Well, it's very obvious, a dangerous play. Some of the fans here don't quite understand it, but the player on the ground like that, trying to play the ball away, is really in, engaging in dangerous play because he can get uh, seriously injured himself because he really can't move around very much, and a uh, player standing up can uh, obviously do some damage just swiping in his foot of the ball, so a referee rightly called dangerous play against Wichita. Zagate wanders as it hits off the glass. Mickey Thomas takes a bump from Carpenter, gets free. Three on three. And it's broken up by Wes McLeod with some tough defensive work by Wes, a former midfielder. McLeod wears those tassels on his socks for good luck. It's been a trademark of his for years. Brought him some luck last year, didn't it? Got a championship ring up the left side. Moreland for Ed Rudwanski. Originally from Neptune, New Jersey. Rudwanski wants the number one draft choice in the MISL. He'll get it in the give and go. Eddie shot. Far uh -huh. post and a score. Ed Rudwanski. What a great goal that was. And it brings the sidekicks within one. That was uh, for Neptune, New Jersey. Tremendous goal. I hope we'll be able to see this uh, a little further back because Rudwanski in the, the first series of passes around the penalty area made a wonderfully clever back and eventually got the return ball and missed, uh, hit the, the sort of the funny squirmy volley that went in. But let's take another look here as Moreland knocks it forward, goes into the corner, Radwanski digs it out nicely. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on him, but he still gives it up. Now watch his touch here when he gets the ball back. It comes back out. Now here's the touch, little flick. You just saw the end of it. And there he hits it back in. He gets a little bit of a lucky break with the deflection. But as he received that ball, he flicked it in beautifully with the inside of his foot went for the return pass and then knocked it up into the corner of, of uh, deflection as well and it's 3-2 wichita here comes Dubrito the other way we'll recap in a moment right across where couldn't get it couldn't get it back the other way raspy suggesting it i don't think that that goal light ever came on the goal was called actually by the referee on that side right side boards fox out to eric rasmussen top of the arc nice turn Faking. Lost it on the spinning move. Ingram almost stole that ball. Now Debrito with a high kick. And now it is picked up by Kevin Smith. Side kicks within a goal as Rodwanski got his ninth of the year at 6.08. Into the corner. Off of Godfrey Ingram and it goes out of play. Should point out that Rodwanski got that real nice one touch on the give and go from Scott Bell, the rookie, on his first shift of the night. And that gives Scott Bell on the season just a couple of points. One goal, one assist, both points have come against Wichita. It was really a, a piece of pretty play to watch, though. A very, very good play indeed for that nice goal. Well, it's all about goalkeeping, too. And uh, we mentioned Tova and Gorsik, and they're just uh, the class of the league. And that's why San Diego's in first place. place. Nobody, uh, nobody has scored more goals, has given up, uh, no other team has given up as few goals as this uh, San Diego club has. Sobieski were watching. Tonight, and you see the scores. Brecky's still out there in French, but uh, by a uh, few. But Mitchell, Sagoda, Jungle, and Byrne putting some pressure on. Mitchell ahead, by the way, in the pressure points category that uh, the league has just added this year. We'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. Playing on the left side now, Kuehle will give it back to Zagante. 7.50 to go. Third quarter, but that Rodwanski goal, not only is it spectacular to watch, but that's a big score for Dallas. But here's Rasmussen behind Lawson. Save, Sobieski, that one looked like it was going by. Now it's Rowe, keeping it alive, but it's broken up as Bell nailed Terry Rowe. Scott Bell played at William & Mary. Yeah, bad mistake by Bell as uh, his team, in fact, had won the ball back, and then he gave it a foul. Stankovic wings up by one. On Rodwanski, wants it on the right foot. Slides it right for Terry Rowe. Back for Stankovic. Stankovic cutting. Got Wilrich free on the left. Now goes right. Culey to row. They look for the ex San Diego soccer. They find him in Wilrich. Holding it. Nice hesitation on that pass. Now Stankovic trying to find Rodwanski. Off the glass. Culey hustles to keep it alive. And a foul is going to be called. Stankovic wants to put the ball in play. Morland doesn't want to give it to him. Bell with the foul on Culey there. <laughs> Haven't had very many fouls in this game, though. I think that's a. Uh, each team has three in this uh, particular period with 7.05 to go in the third period. Terry Rowe with it down the left. Working against McLeod. Out for Culey, a 3-2 wings lead. Less than seven minutes here. Still in the third, Rodwanski. Trying to take it away from Rowich, and now it's taken over by Culey. 
Plays it in off the boards for Woolrich. And Lawson now finds Rodwanski. Picked up by McLeod, a giveaway. Rasmussen, top of the arc. Great save, Sobieski. Oh, boy. And the last guy you want to give that ball away to in a clear giveaway like that on the wings, anyway, is Rasmussen. Oh, so. Yes, Wes McLeod should go and thank Chris Sobieski for that save. A dreadful uh, mistake by Sobieski. Uh, by uh, McLeod, he makes another one. Hogging over the line, Stankovic to the right, Debrito left. Here's Debrito, left foot off the boards. It's loose. Right through the box, and Powers runs it out. Full speed ahead, Mike Powers from St. Louis, Missouri. Now for Godfrey Ingram. Ingram, one of the Fab Four last year in Tacoma. Now to Jeffries. Right back, Ingram walks in, a great uh -huh. save. Oh, it's a god, they stoned him right there. That's taken one away. That was a pretty play to watch all around. Great give and go. Wonderful give and go, Jeffries and Ingram. And Ingram at one point had four players in front of him and didn't phase him in the least. He still uh, did that one-on-one -on -one thing. Well, Ingram walked in. And he appeared to do everything right, but Zagani beat him on this one. Look at all these players he has. He gives it off and then gets it back, gets behind them all as they really don't track him down. And how you cannot uh, close down a man of that talent going through is beyond me. Not as good as Tattoo, but he's doing a job. Kevin Smith. Picked up by Fox. Too late. He almost scored right there. Fox didn't pressure him as Jeffries treaded out of play. So, with this break in the action, 5.36 left in the third. Wichita still leading, but the sidekicks are coming back. Gordon did a great job with this club. Part of the reason they did so well was they did excellently on the road last year. This year, they're struggling on the road. We asked Gordon why. I think we can answer that in one word, tattoo. Uh, when you're on the road, the home team is really pushing in against you. You know, they're expected to win. And then we would capture the ball, spring it forward to tattoo. He would do his magic, score goals, and we would have, have a much, much better chance. And the number of times we won road trips, really on the back of tattoo, creating something from nothing, and then us giving a good stout defense. And they really do miss him. The league misses Tattoo. In fact, he's probably cost the league, and Dallas in particular, quite a few thousand people at the gate, although the sidekick's doing much better attendance-wise. There's no question that the loss of Tattoo has cost, caused some loss of dollars around the league. Stankovic and Smith go dancing in the foul on Smith. Stankovic will cut it now on the left side of Stanley. Other games going on. San Diego leading St. Louis in the fourth quarter, 4-2. to two. Hagen on the right against stride out it comes this is debrito works it toward the middle a 3-2 lead here for the wings fouls even at four apiece hagen bumped by stride off the boards rodwanski knocking it back for kevin smith now on the left side george espinoza limited duty tonight for espinoza the x-wing and now rodwanski over the back of stanley that's a bad foul to take there eddie's trying to put some pressure on but that's going to give dallas their fifth foul Gary Stanley, pressured now by Scott Bell. Up the right side, Stankovic. Knocked back, Stanley again. 4.45 left in the third. Thomas in the wings, leaded by one. Mickey Thomas has to come back for it. Sidekick put some pressure on. Another look at the fouls with Dallas. Yeah. Five in the wings, four. Difficult situation for Dallas. JP, if I write five fouls, they got some tough guys out there. Stride, Moreland, and company they are they're a physical team and they're also a savvy team i think uh, they must know at this point they have five everybody uh, brings up the shot from the bench that they're on five but they've got four minutes and 19 seconds to play with that fifth foul ingram coming back across the attack line cuts it for jeffries back for ingram got for ingram going against fox in a corner jeffries smith wants the ball it goes instead mcleod fans on it and he'll have to hustle back as the wings bring it up fox to rasmussen Eric Rasmussen plays it across. Now it's Woolwich. Across on the right for Rowe. Terry Rowe with a lot of daylight. Ingram closing the door. Played across. And now Cooley will settle it down for Gene Woolwich. 3.43 left in the third. A one-goal Wings lead in Terry Nichols' debut at home as coach of the Wings. He brought them two wins in three games in the road, and they actually played well enough to win that first game against Tacoma. Pedro Debrito said in a newspaper story today he thought they played better in that game but didn't win it. Wes McLeod now gives it back to Sobieski. Sobieski gets better with age and comes into the season at 37 years of age. 
and he's not the oldest goalkeeper in the league. Up the floor. Now played back to Morla. I guess uh, Slobolievsky would hold that distinction at the age of 38. McLeod on the left side. Drawing row toward him. Play back into the neutral zone now for Moreland. Three minutes straight up. Victor Moreland sending it in long off the boards. A collision there. Loose ball. McLeod. Great oh. save. Zagante. Oh, great save. Zagante committing himself almost before McLeod shot. And here's a break. Terry Rowe against Bell. And he's taken down. What do they call it? Both officials call it. It's the shootout. They're calling the shootout because Rowe did have a step on the defender. Well, we'll have a chance to see it again and see if Rowe helps it out, too. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's a tough one. It seems to me that Rowe had lost the ball on, his, on the first touch before he was fouled. Uh, but I don't know. Let's take a look at it again. Let's see. Here's the ball being played through. Rowe goes after. You see his touch there. And then down he goes. Or did he even touch it? I don't know. I, pretty late for a shootout call. When we come back. The Wings will have a shootout. They've not scored on the shootout. A new player, Dave Hoggett, will take it. We'll be back. Scores. NCAA basketball season goes to the Longhorn State. South. It's tried it. Clinton scores, so the Wings are all for two of the shootouts. We'll see what they do. One on one in five seconds. Hagen straight forward. Sobieski straight out. Shot went wide. No rebound of the Hagen. Could have had a rebound. He had enough time, but that ball went away. So the Wings all for three. Seamus could be, even though Sobieski does not have to make a save, a turning point in the game. Could very well be. Uh, Hagen thinks he's got his spot picked out. Keeper covers that corner pretty well. Doesn't give him very much to shoot at. And uh, Hagen actually had a bit more time. I think that's one of the crucial things about that. Hagen not playing as well in this half. And I don't mean just because he missed that, but he's not as dominant uh, and as impressive as he was in the early going. But uh, I think players really uh, underestimate how long five seconds uh, can be. We all know on television it can be a lifetime, frankly, when you're on the air. But uh, he did not. He could have taken a little bit more time and uh, faked a bit, but didn't. Power play on, though. They still get that advantage yep. because of the shootout call. Raspi sit over to Stankovic. If they had scored the goal, they would not have had the penalty or the man advantage here. Willrich to Rasmussen. Holding it. Right side to Willrich. Thomas right across and there's Sobieski. So Sobieski and the sidekicks get part of the job done in that they deny the shootout bid. But now they must stop the wings here. Played up now to Redwanski. Good lead ball off the boards. Kevin Smith. Redwanski and he mistimed it on the header. He was walking in. McLeod. Nice deep to get free. To Redwanski. And they're not only killing some time, but they're threatening here. Nice idea by Redwanski, but it's picked off, and that's going to leave the sidekicks hustling back. Stankovic to Hagen. Will he finish? No. Too high and wide as Hagen wanted to get one back for the one he had missed. Back in the right powers. Remember, the sidekicks playing with five fouls, too, and the wings with four. So if Dallas gets another foul, they could be two men down. Here's Rasmus in a bomb off the post and out. I thought that was going to be a goal. I thought that wasn't the uh, foul at the top of the penalty area that gives the penalty. Shouldn't that have been the sixth foul? No, they called it as a penalty. Right side across here, Stankovic, and it's blocked in front. And cleared out of play. On the, on the, you're talking about the bell play? Yes, yeah. yeah. They called a holding penalty. And so it was two minutes. Otherwise, uh, it was just a, just a right, foul. They would have right. still brought it out. Probably to the top of the arc as we look at Sobieski. What must he be thinking here? Well, that looked like it was labeled. It came down. It was not over the line. As uh, nobody's claiming a goal, and the defenders look uh, relaxed, not worried about the referees maybe calling that one as behind the line, because it clearly wasn't. 30 seconds of the power play. Rasmussen, three to two. Wings are leading it. Eric Rasmussen again. They call him the wizard. If you're watching this telecast, it's obvious why. He hasn't shown you everything that he's got either. Here's Rasmussen again. Wanted to spin away, but McLeod doesn't buy that fake. All the way back to Zigante. Right side, Rasmussen. Nine seconds up to the power play. Across for Stankovic. On the left foot, he fakes, pulls it back. Willrich shooting it, blocked by McLeod. Rasmussen getting it. The penalty over on Bell. Rasmussen, a great fake, and then he shot it wide. Did everything well except for the shot, the final play there. 
sidekicks want to give some guys breathers if they can, but right now the wings still control it. Yeah. They've got guys that need a rest too. And they don't want to commit the sixth foul, as you mentioned. And uh, that's a good break here for it to go out of play because sometimes when you're fatigued, that will happen. And that's a good time for everyone to remind themselves what they've got there, as Gordon Jago, no doubt, is well aware of the five fouls, four on Wichita. As the sidekicks cock it over. Another look at Terry Nickel. He's going to be, uh, I would have to think that he'd have some butterflies in his stomach today, returning home to where he had played. He always loved the fans here. They treated him very well. And if he's joined us late, I mean, he just got a thunderous ovation when he came out on the floor. Dallas he wasn't nervous before. He, he probably had to be after he heard that ovation. That's right. Dallas has done very well to uh, kill this, uh, this uh, crisis situation off. They want to do some 19 seconds more, and then they'll be very happy. Sobieski catching this one. That's right, they could end this quarter. Yeah. Only down by one. And the idea when you're down by a couple, take them one at a time. So they narrow the gap as Moreland has it. Deflected out of play, and naturally both players say it's their ball. It can't belong to both, and the wings will get it. Like the old fumble recovery in football. Both sides say, I got it. DeBrito on the restart. There's your clock at the bottom of the screen. Five seconds left. Up for Mark Curlin. He'll just trap it to the chest. Over the line he comes. A second to go. Stride let him go. Now he shot it at Sobieski. He obviously didn't hear the horn sounding ending the third quarter. I don't think Sobieski was too pleased with that. He was too pleased with that. To the MISL game of the week as the Wichita Wings lead it by the score of three to two, but it got a lot closer thanks to Redwanski's score. Yeah, there you see the tail end of it as the keeper is committed to the far side and the ball takes a bounce off a defender and goes in. But Redwanski did all the good work uh, with the, fl the flick off to get the and then get the return from Bell. So that's uh, the go ahead goal. I mean, sorry, the second goal uh, for Dallas. Now we'll take a look at this save by Ziggy here. As uh, McLeod looks to be in great shape and the ball comes through the middle, looks like he should surely score. And Ziggy goes down, sprawls himself in the front, and knocks it away when it uh, looked like he committed himself, even before the shot was taken, trying to cover as much of the ground as possible. But then it was a great chance, the shootout by Dave Hagen. He's got a lot of time here. He tries to force it into that right-hand side. It really misses by quite a bit. He might really have faked a bit that side, then pull it and hit it to the left. Of course, that's nice and easy for us <laughs> to say. And that man down there, Gordon Jago, got to be a bit relieved. Uh, he was down 3-1. He's now down 3-2. And um, could have been 4-2 with uh, the shootout, followed by the power play. But they survived that. They're now at 15 minutes to try to get the right together. Uh, Gordon Jago's got to be thinking about Dallas when they trail. They're 0-7 when they trail at the end of three quarters of play. By the way, this game is sellout tonight. 9,674, their third sellout this season. Here's Hagen now, broken up by David Stride. And back the other way come the sidekicks as it's played back now to Mike Powers. Up the left wing side boards. Now Ingram plays it to the middle. Back for stride. Picked up by Hagen. Right side by Powers. Going long. Radwanski. Gotta give credit to both sides, Seamus. Both teams in foul trouble and didn't get caught there with a sixth foul in the end. Dallas had five, the Wings had four. Up for Ingram. Broken up. Mickey Thomas down the left wing. A popular player here for the Wings. Broken up by Mike Powers, just holding his ground. Good yeah, play. Very cl clever play by Powers. He knew that Mickey Thomas was going to try to play that ball off the wall and get it back to himself. And uh, he was just ready for it. Powers, a uh, player that uh, Gordon Jiggle was very happy with last year because of his uh, progress. And obviously, he's getting better and better now. And as that ball goes out of play, it'll be put back in play by the sidekicks. We look at their captain, Victor Moreland. Don't forget the ninth annual Major Indoor Soccer League All-Star Game airing next Thursday, February 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Seamus and I hope you'll be along for that. The All-Star Games that we've done over the last three years have been great fun to watch and great fun to telecast. Everybody has a great time. If you're up there in the Tacoma area and you haven't already purchased your tickets, you may want to get in touch with the Tacoma Stars and find out exactly what's available for that game. Up the left side, Victor Moreland in the corner. Scott Bell broken up. A lot of games going on tonight in the MISL. We'll do our best to update you as this one progresses. Up 
the right side intended for Hagen, and it's knocked out of play again. Both sides say it is theirs. And the crowd, the faithful, sold it out for the third time this season. But it's not so much the crowd, it's, it's the noise that they make, it's the low ceiling, it's the acoustics here, it's the orange that they wear. I mean, it's just an awesome crowd. And I'll tell you what, they're worth at least a goal a game here for the home team, Wichita Wings, has played long. Stanley will get it before Scott Bell does. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now looks to throw Zagante up for Woolwich. This is important for the Wings here because not only do they win two in a row, but they've got a four-game homestand sandwiched around the All-Star break. Ball cleared in around the boards. There'll, there'll be one unhappy ad advertiser out here, Sheamus, as uh, one of the signs goes down. San Diego has beaten the St. Louis Steamers by the score of 5-2, to two, and right here, the Wings are still on top. 3-2 to two is your score. The go-ahead goal belongs to Eric Rasmussen. We'll be right back. got free from Jim Peterson thought he had an easy opportunity when you have someone that can hover like that no chance Alonzo on a 67 percent foul shooter free throws they had shot more than 90 percent in their two previous back in Wichita Brian Hall says that's my ball I'm going home I guess as he goes up some of the faithful here. MetLife, it's uh, one of their days here giving away 5,000 hats. There's some fun, proud person right. wearing it. Somebody's Valentine there. Let's look at the Western Division, Seamus, as we started it with San Diego, and I guess the rest of the West is the line we've been using, and it, it's held true. But look at Kansas City, they've won five straight. Yeah, you never would have thought Tacoma at this point in the season with the uh, 15 and 16, but they're tough at home. They're troubling on the road. Now, Cleveland, um, had trouble in, with St. Louis last night and lost, and Minnesota was happy to see that. They're closing in, as are Chicago, and Dallas here would love to stay a bit close. Baltimore, that's a surprise, and they sure want to get out of that position real fast. Kenny Cooper not the least bit pleased with being in fifth place. How would you like to pick the team that's not going to make the playoffs yep. in the East? Yep. Mark Carpenter will be putting it in play, or he'll be defending, I'm sorry, against Debrito. It's Wichita's ball, and they'll play it right side. Fox. Played indoors with the ill-fated Las Vegas Americans. He'll lift it long. Intended for Debrito too long. And all of a sudden, instead of the end-to-end -end action, it's going out of play quite a bit. Espinoza. Well, you know, the game's sort of up for grabs at this point. A 3-2 lead, obviously, Wichita's ahead, but uh, one goal lead means nothing in indoor soccer. And uh, no team really in the last few minutes has established much in the way of pattern of play. They've not done something that's uh, really putting their opponents under a great deal of pressure. Coming up, our next MISO regular Friday night game of the week, the San Diego Soccer, as we mentioned before, in first place in the West, will visit Baltimore, 8 p.m. Eastern time next Friday, February the 19th. They're doing some talking with Mike Stankovich and Victor Moreland. I got to guess something's wrong with the clock here. 12.52 is all that's left here. And apparently the word we're getting is that during the dead ball situation, when the ball has gone out of play, a few seconds of the clock have managed to tick off. Jesse Baharmus now telling probably the other official for him to make sure he's keeping the official time. And speaking of time, we'll have time to tell you about picking up your official schedule and rule book from the MISL or the great guide that they published this year. $10 is what the guide costs. Send check or money order to MISL Publications, 757 Third Avenue, number 2305, New York, New York, 10017. That's a great way to follow the major indoor soccer league. Right side, Kevin Smith. Picked up by Fox. Left side for Stride. Knocked back to Stride by Ingram. Now on the right side, Kevin Smith. For Carpet. Dallas spreading that ball around, but DeBrito cuts it off. DeBrito let go by Dallas earlier this season. Now it's taken by Fox. DeBrito has managed to win a job here with the wings. Stanley up now to Rasmussen trying to beat Espinoza. Espinoza's been around. He doesn't fall for that. In fact, he and Rasmussen were teammates a couple years ago. Left wing boards. Carpet on the double team. It's cleared all the way back. Here comes McLeod with good hustle. Trying to bring it in, but he's broken up by Wilrich. And the veteran Wilrich leads Mike Fox. Rasmussen heads for an open space. Knocked back 
kind of Gary Stanley. Les McLeod, for a player of such experience, JP, has occasional lapses in judgment about decisions on the ball that, uh, that surprised me a bit. We saw him in the uh, third want to give the ball up twice in his own end very dangerously, and there he tried to go one-on-one -on -one in a situation where he had some very good opportunities to do some quick uh, teamwork. Here's Rose shaking loose of Radwanski. The shot too high and wide. That one didn't miss by too much, though. Rasmus has taken down as the ball goes out of play. And they're just going to give the ball to Wichita. As players discuss it, Rasmussen thought he should have had a foul. Next, after this game on FNN Score, the final score. Comprehensive sports update. What a great name for the uh, scoreboard show, right? The final score next, right after the conclusion of our telecast. And as Seamus said, it's still anyone's game. This game is right there for either side. Whoever plays a, the best 11 and a half is going to come away with a win because a one-goal lead is not all that secure in the MISL. Right side row. Back in the neutral zone for Kuli to Stankovic. Picked up by Bell. Stankovic cutting it back for Kuli. In the space, Mickey Thomas wanting to turn. On the left foot, gives it to Eric Grasmussen. Across he goes on the right. Stankovic against Bell. Left footer is blocked and dead in there for Sobieski. Otherwise, that's deflected upstairs. He may not have a chance. Yeah. Good, good composure, though, by the Dallas defenders there. Nobody panicked. Nobody left his position. They blocked the alleys uh, for the dangerous through ball. Here they come on the right. The wings. Rasmussen. Slowed down by Powers. Nice spinning move, but Powers stays with him. That's no. a great defensive play. And that's the difference between what happened to Stride and him before. At that time, the power stayed a little bit, a half step off him. And you've got to do that with Rasmussen. You play him too close, you'll get burned. He stayed a half step off him, so he had a little bit more reaction time. A split second more reaction time when Rasmussen made the turn. Surprise Powers isn't dizzy from that spin because yeah. Rasmussen really went around. Ball is cleared back to Zagante. This shows you, though, they've only given up three goals in the row of the sidekicks defensively, and they win a lot of games that way. Great defensive record. They've been unable to score a lot of goals this year, but last year, despite Tattoo's great season, they were eighth in scoring in the major indoor soccer league. They had the very best defense, though, and that won them a lot of games by the lower scores. And they're hanging in here. Down 3-2. to two. Here's another score. 1-1 one, KC, one, a hot Comets team in L.A., Watch out there because the Lasers generally don't do well at home, but they do outstanding on the road. Well, Stanley will get it here. You mentioned Dallas defense last year. You know, every coach tells you great defense wins the championship. Uh, and San Diego had all those big names scoring, but uh, as I've said too many times already, uh, their defense really, in my view, is what was so solid about that club. Ball played in on the right. Harpin broke it up. Harpin to the game-winning goal last year in game six and seven of the finals. Up the left side. Roll for Thomas. Carpet stays in there tough. Almost wins that ball. Now played back for Stanley. 9.20 left in regulation time. A one-goal lead for the Wings. Hagen putting it in for Stankovic. And then Hagen got metal on those boards. Yep. Espinoza with the foul. First foul of the quarter. This is Stankovic from Hagen. Going up against Kevin Smith. Right side to Brito. Going to the outside on Bell. In the corner, DeBrito, no room there. Sees a chance to play it out for Stanley. Stanley, out about 70 feet, now hits Thomas. In for Hagen, wanting to turn, he juggles first. Looks to turn. Trying to take it, now he's double teamed. Stride, good support with Espinoza there. And now Stride plays it back for Sobieski. Looked dangerous at first, but Hagen couldn't control the juggle and bring it around. Back on the right side, Kevin Smith. Turns it ahead to Rodwanski. Drop back for Smith, and he shoots it in wide. Coming in is McLeod, heading into the corner for Bell. Scott Bell with two wings around him. Played out now to Kevin Smith. Block. Smith stays with it. Kevin Smith. Look at the hustle by Smith. And he's going to be almost out of gas. McLeod out now to Espinosa. It's been a hard shift here for Kevin Smith. Now it's Bell. Holding it. For Espinosa, block. Fox doesn't see it. Espinosa now with Bell. Across McLeod. Open man, Kevin Smith. The right footer. Good foot save, Zagante. Kicked away by the wings, but the sidekicks continue to put the heat on. Espinosa. Now Moreland is on for Kevin Smith. All the way back for Sobieski. 7.45 to go. Fourth quarter, a 3-2 Wichita lead. Sobieski with skills of a field player. Up the wing, Moreland. 
pressured by Stanley. Sent back toward Espinosa. Fox breaks it up. Fox plays it back in the neutral zone for Stanley. Double team. Red Watts, good pressure to win it. There's Victor Moreland for Ingram. Ingram over the line. Playing in his third team this season. Now in for Rodwatsky. As Zagante came out, knocked out to the right point. Victor Moreland is there. In for Ingram, wanting to turn. Wings don't let him. Sidekicks get possession with Powers. Into the corner. Banged off the board. Ziggy will get it in front. Great save, Zagante. And McLeod's going to wonder if Ziggy's got his number. And McLeod limping off hurt him that uh, particular shift. As is uh, Debrito, but Debrito looks to be okay. Now it's Fox, right side. Rasmussen on the right foot. Wanted to cut it back. He may still get it. Right footer in front. Score! Terry Rowe! Well, you got to feel a little sorry for a Dallas here. They looked like they had stolen this one away. And see, he loses it, got back, the player falls over, Stride can't get to it, his own man gets him, prevents him from getting to the play, and uh, the ball just sort of squirts in there to, was that Terry Rowe who knocked it in? Yes. And there you see, the ball comes back to Rasmussen, look at Stride, he can't get at him, can't get over his own player, keeper comes out on its curtains, because Rowe touches it beautifully, so Rasmussen serves a lovely ball up to Rowe, and he knocks it in. And the key there, Rasmussen just doesn't give up, he makes it happen, a big goal for the Wings, they lead by a couple. Okay, sports fans, who's going to win big in Super Bowl 22? Well, it doesn't matter if it's Denver or Washington because you now have an opportunity to own your own piece of Super Bowl history. That's right, for a limited time, you can own the official Super Bowl 22 silver coin medallion set. Each set, officially licensed by the NFL, contains a medallion from the two conference champions as well as the Super Bowl champion. The medallions are struck in the finest proof-like conditions in beautifully designed pure silver. Each coin from this limited mint is stamped on the edge with its own serial number. Only 1,000 sets will be struck, so you must act now. Imagine owning your own Super Bowl memory that can appreciate in value. Long after game day is gone, you will be able to relive your Super Bowl experience in these investment quality coin medallions. The cost of this collectible silver Super Bowl medallion set is only $99 plus shipping and handling. So call 1-800-962-2962. That's 1-800-962-2962. Back in Wichita, Seamus, how many times do they say it in this sport and in hockey? Sometimes the big save on one end leads to it. The other, Zagante robs McLeod. He just robs him there. And then the Wings come back and score a goal. Exactly. And uh, Dallas got to be very, very upset. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on. Wichita got to be very happy. They absorbed the pressure. They got the critical individual play from the keeper. And they converted that to emotional high, if you will, into a quick break at the other end and uh, punished Dallas. That's a bad blow for Dallas. They've got six and a half minutes to go, but a two-goal lead at this point uh, is pretty hard to overcome away from home. Zagante with a toss, and you still may see the sixth attacker with uh, Kevin Smith coming in there. Ball is cleared up off the scoreboard. 6.18 left in the game, and still, as you mentioned, an awful lot of time, but that's going to be frustrating for Dallas because by all rights, they've got a goal the other way. And then they come back and actually look like they won the ball. The big Rasmussen did lose it, but he stayed with it, and then they end up with a big goal. So yeah. now it's 4-2 instead of 3-3. Stride will have a restart coming up. Rasmussen defending on him. Rasmussen's been hot. Ball played in now for Ingram. Rasmussen coming into the game under Terry Nichols. Six goals, two assists in three games. What does he have here? A goal and an assist in this one. So that would be seven and three for ten in four games. We're not done yet. Ingram, left side. Stride, right in front, blocked by Stankovic. David Stride after to the far side. Playing with an arthritic left toe. That's been bothering him. will probably bother him for a long time. As all year. Rasmussen. Mm, nice piece of work by Rasmussen. A little clever dribble to get the ball away. And then a nice soft pass into the stride of Hoffman. On the left, Mickey Thomas. Now it's DeBrito. Across the other way for Hagen. A sold-out crowd here in Wichita welcoming Terry Nickel back home. He had played here for a few seasons. They used to call him the general. 
to work as hard as anybody out here. And then he went, uh, left here as a player, went as a player, and then as an assistant coach down in Memphis, got the head coaching job down there, became coach of the year. Then this year, just this week, was named again coach of the year. He won that honor actually while he was up here in Wichita. At least that's when they announced it. We want to talk about the MetLife players of the game here. We're speculating. It's a little early. There's Coach Jago. We've talked about him quite a bit tonight. But that man, Redwanski, in your screen, you saw for a second. Uh, Ed Redwanski's had a very good game. Uh, as we look out of town, and see a bit of an interesting uh, result there for the Chicago Sting, beating Tacoma 5-4. Redwanski doing very well, but uh, Zagante really has saved uh, the Wichita Club at crucial moments in this game. Collision on the far side, and the foul is Colin Fox. It'll be the first wings foul. Well, Zagante, if he keeps playing like this, instead of next year people wondering who he is because he wasn't even here at the beginning, no, nothing in the media guide, then they made up a, a small sheet on him, and they don't really have a lot of information, but next year they'll have a lot. Up for Scott Bell. Off the boards. Here's Moreland getting into a good position against Zagante, but now he's tied up. Triple team to the corner. Victor keeps plowing along with help from Bell. Oh, Dallas not to be denied, except that way they're going to call a foul. Foul on the sidekicks. There's Pedro DeBrito able to manage to smile through all of that. Of course, it's easier to smile when you're up by two instead of drilling. Right side, DeBrito. Now back for Zagante. Long toss. One and Curler. That's too long. And all the way back for Sobieski. Sobieski on the right side to McLeod. West McLeod moving it over midfield. Broken up, but he'll get it right back in stride. McLeod, 40-footer deflected, and it'll go out of play. So with four minutes, 36 seconds left in the game, the sidekicks need a couple of goals just to tie. Wings on top. Here they made those great comebacks in the championship series. So all is not lost for Dallas. As long as Kevin Smith and company can get a few cracks at it, he is their sixth attacker. Moreland has played it before. Others may have a little bit, but by and large, this year and in years past, Kevin Smith. Moreland in for Ingram, and it was blocked nicely by DeBrito, who may have saved the goal on that, with Zagante going down. Well, Ingram made a great uh, blindsided run there. That is coming from the back of DeBrito. DeBrito watching the ball, but then he saw it just out of the corner of his eye. He saw Ingram coming and managed to block it. Moreland off the boards and kicked out by Rowe. Good thing because Ooh. Carpenter was open. Yeah, sure was. Ball played up now the opposite side. Rudwanski heading it down and Moreland will go after it. Kevin Smith, this will be the 13th time as a sixth attacker. On the right side. Plays it across. Back for Kevin Smith. Right-footed shot through traffic. Blocked by DeBrito. Back the other way. Rasmussen going long. his head oh I'd love to see that one again I was sure he hit it with his hand that if he did you know the outcome of that Smith now ahead to Moreland back down the left side stride back the other way Victor Moreland with it along the near side Moreland would have had a two minute penalty for intentionally handling the ball and I didn't see, was he, if he was in the box, it would have been a penalty kick, but he was not, I don't believe, in the box. He was well short of it. Here's Ingram, off the boards. Nobody there, except for Rasmussen. He takes a quick look, finds Stankovic in midfield. Wings lead at four to two. Stankovic cuts it back unselfishly for Rasmussen. Off the boards, Rasmussen. Look at this break, the shot went wide, but he got away from three guys in the boards. And now Moreland will bring it up. Victor Moreland to Kevin Smith. 4-2 Wichita. Sidekicks know that there's about three minutes to go here. And they'll get that encouragement from their bench. Always be aware of that clock. They'll take a look when they can themselves. Right wing boards. Redwanski to Ingram. Back for Ed Redwanski. Ingram again. Smith. They'll try to move it around as quickly as they can. Redwanski fighting for it. Won it well. Try to play it across. Right idea, but he's broken up. Ingram is blocked. Look out. Here come the wings. DeBrito coming back. Puts it in his face. Strankovic, but at a bad angle. Now he'll take it. And it's blocked by Stride, and it's coming all the way back. DeBrito might have
had been faked out a bit by the referee Hall, who was in the way on the near side. And he couldn't go far. Up for Hagen. Now back the other way, and here's Kevin Smith. Smith on the left side for Stride. Woolworths putting some pressure on. Down to 205 here. Kevin Smith yep. on the sixth attack. To Mike Powers. Now on the left side. McLeod shooting it. Blocked. It comes right back. Here's a block by Fox. But Smith is right there. Still four to two. Wings lead it by a couple. Mike Powers to McLeod. Left footer blocked. McLeod's had a rough day offensively. He should have had maybe three goals if he had any kind of luck whatsoever, but Zagante's robbed him. Now back for Smith. 135 left. Right side. Ingram right across. Save Zagante. Along the boards. Hagen won it. Plowed over his powers, but he'll win the ball now. It's going back instead to Rowe. Right across in the reverse. A hard ball for Wilberts to handle. Nice smart passing here by the wings. Fox taken down by Ingram. Second foul or make it third on Dallas. And know Rowe has done a good job back there. Terry Rowe has made some very key clearances and key blocks. A uh, little thing that didn't go to notice, but here's the replay of the foul. Godfrey Ingram putting a lot of pressure on Mike Fox. He's got to win the ball back and have any chance to get a quick goal to get him back into this thing. But uh, with a minute and 12 to go, it's a little bit far-fetched to dream. That might have been a fatigue foul as well. He was going to the bench for a breather. Right now, the Wings holding on to a 4-2 lead. Gordon Jago is not talking about our MetLife players of the game, Seamus, but I guess we could do that. He's talking to one of them, though. He's yeah. talking to Red Lonsky, who I think uh, has had a very good game. Um, there have been some several. It was a good team effort by Dallas, but uh, again, only two goals, and that's the problem for them. They still have trouble scoring. Eddie Red Lonsky, but the MetLife player again. Now Wichita, I think much, much doubt about it. Rasmussen's had a great game, but this guy has just been immense. Uh, Ziggy Zagante has made some critical saves particularly on McLeod, and McLeod is going to go to his bed tonight muttering about uh, imports from uh, Zagreb, Yugoslavia. And let's go back with the memory. It's a 3-2 game. McLeod walks in. Ziggy stops him there. They come back the other way right after that, immediately after that, and they end up scoring a goal as Rasmussen feeds Terry Rowe, and that's the two-goal margin of error right here, the margin of victory if the Wings hold on to it here. And who knows what might have happened if Dallas had tied it up. Yeah. They're still not out. They need a quick goal here. And uh, the reason I say they're still not out is I remember that championship series. Dallas, uh, if they do lose, it will be 15 and 18, which will tie them with Baltimore for fourth position. So the Blast fans are hoping that uh, Wichita can ice this thing with a minute 12 to go. Wichita would move to uh, 14 and 17 and edge uh, a little bit closer. Yeah, the wings are, gonna, wings are going to scare some people right now. Because if they can win this game, that'll be three straight. And they've got three more at home That's before right. they'll hit the road again. And Terry Nichols got them playing well. Yep, Tacoma now at 15 and 17 with their loss to Chicago tonight. So they're moving down a notch as Wichita's moving closer to him. Zigante from Stankovic. He'll boot it ahead. Kevin Smith settles it down. One minute left right now. Smith over the line, right side on the pass to Moreland against DeBrito. Ingram. Still 4-2. Wings are leading it. Ingram right across. Broken up. Keeley lifting it for Rasmussen. Rasmussen going along with it. But that needed to go several more feet. And Kevin Smith is there anyway. Back over midfield. Kevin Smith with 37 seconds to play. Right side. Ingram. Fan on it. Now Rodwanski can't get it. It's a loose ball. Ingram fights hard to win it. But it's cleared ahead. Stankovic coming back over the line. 26 seconds. 25 across Rasmussen score it's academic the wings get their fifth goal they lead five to two well Rasmussen with the second goal of the night so his first one was a Superb uh, individual effort. This one was just a little tuck in of a finely timed ball from Stankovic at uh, garbage time early in the game with the sixth uh, attacker for Dallas on. Little pass across. Victor Moreland can't possibly get back given his commitment and the uh, keeper, the sixth uh, attacker or keeper, if you will. All that uh, goal does. Do it. All that 
goal does is give the fans a chance for more exercise. Get them on their feet, clapping again before they head for the parking lots. It's 5-2 Wichita. But I think the game shame is more, a lot closer than the score indicates. Here's Hagen. Kevin Smith with a tough tackle to win that. Going all out despite no chance to win. And that's where you're going to applaud the efforts of the players. That's it. Time runs up. And how about Kevin Smith? He could just let Hagen go with very little effort there. But instead, he goes in tough to end the game as hard as they've played all night. And again, the score a bit misleading. Not really a three-goal result. But Rasmussen scores in the end. 30th of the season from Stankovic. The 14th time this year that on a goal. The Wings send a sellout crowd home happy, and we'll be back to talk about it. He has never been known for a lack of innovation, and here is the latest idea. As these two players are going to combine and keep the ball going as much as possible, and then set up uh, a spectacular shooting opportunity. These players, uh, look at this, nice little backhead drop there, and then the flick forward, and then the forward roll. Flip it up and sets it up for the scissors. Bang, and it's in the net. That's Scott Bell of the sidekicks who made that kick, and he was helped out by teammate Mark Carlin. Well, Mark Lucas, I'm sorry. Look at that little touch by Hermes. Uh, these two players really got into the spirit of this thing. Doherty and Hermes, they really thought about of, uh, this. They thought a lot about it. Uh, Ron Newman, of course, took all the credit, as usual. How about that? You see uh, finishing volley. Very nice timing between those two players, I must say. And those ball, that ball has got to drop just right uh, for Hermes to make that shot. They call this group the Hugo Duo, and it's actually Ziggy Zigante, the goalkeeper. Watch his skill. And number 16, Mickey Karavich. This is a goalkeeper doing this. And his impression of a seal. And close your eyes if you don't want to look at this. Do not practice this at home, Seamus. <laughs> it's a dangerous stunt, but they got away with it. Actually, that got the crowd really excited. And it looked like the Hugo duo, as they call themselves, were off and running. And then it was Kansas City. Kia actually steals the show. This is a great duo, too, here. They really have enormous skills. Look at Kia. Kia is a tiny guy, but look at this. He's able to dive over the top of Ron Fed. And now look at this foot trap. They're able to grab the ball, like grab the ball between his legs and give it back several times. And then that old back flip. And finally, he'll head forward. And of course, inevitably, the scissors kick into the net. So very creative stuff there by Kansas City. Especially since Ron Fed had only about 20 minutes to prepare for that. He was a late addition for Chris Hundelt who was injured. Daryl Duran and Paulie Garcia of the St. Louis Steamers will try to get something going. This was opening round competition. Uh, you'll see some heading combination here, but also Duran decides to use his shoulder. There's the right shoulder and the left shoulder. And it comes back uh, to Garcia, but they do very well keeping this ball up between them, not letting it hit the ground, and eventually setting up their chance for goal. Looks like they might have lost it there, but they got it back. Keep it going very nicely, and the inevitable scissors, of course. The spectacular finish that I suppose is the closest thing to the Michael Jordan effect. Then we went on to the finals and the duo of Juan Hermes and Paul Dougherty. They call themselves the odd couple flippers and we're going to see something spectacular at the end of this. Well that was a great start by Dougherty. Of course he's all of 5-2 and Hermes has got tremendous leg strength as you can see in his, uh, his trunk there and this is why he needs it. You don't do this with Stamenkovic but you can no, with Dougherty. <laughs> Look at this finish now. We're off the glass and the header Great creativity and there. The, the amazing thing is he avoids a concussion by not hitting the goalpost, but he shows a celebration. Actually, one of the reasons why this thing worked was because of the charisma of a Hermes and a Dougherty. They were jumping on the glass. They were encouraging the fans to participate in it, and it was the first-time deal set up by Claudia Best of the Stars. No one knew how it was going to work, but the crowd seemed to enjoy it. Well, it was so good, it's worth looking at again. That's a great start from Doherty. You're quite right, JP. He really got into the spirit of things. And uh, we're talking talking with him today at uh, the media game, and uh, he's still chatting about it. Of course, he got a very nice prize for himself, but look at this. Very good control. That's not easy to do, even without a guy in your back, even a guy as little as Paul Doherty. And uh, we'll take one more look at the finish here as Doherty sets it up by putting it up in the air first. It gives him the chance to jump up on the... Neck there of Hermes, the ball comes down. And Hermes now is juggling the ball with those fabulously strong thighs of his. And um, eventually the header goes in goal. And a very fine finish. Well, those two guys stole the show, but they also managed to steal a little bit of the media game today as they um, came out to do their thing in what was supposed to be the press's affair, but they came and had some fun. These guys had some fun too. Kansas City actually had gone before San Diego, but this was their final attempt. Some very nice creativity here too. And the final 
volley of the goal. That got him uh, close to first place, but not close enough, as indeed uh, the victory was um, taken very nicely by the San Diego duo, and they uh, won the first prize in the Star Shot competition. Well, that was some of the excitement here we saw last night, and uh, well, we'll take one more look at that little piece of uh, dribbling there on the head, looking uh, very much like the seal in the zoo. And the final volley, which everybody loves to see for Kansas City. Look at this. Want to try this sometime? Why not? Look at that very good trap, though, by Kia, holding that ball, keeping his balance. And you'll see him put the volley in. Now, watch his head after he makes this. He really comes down very hard, goes behind, turns around, sets himself up, whack. Now, look at his neck and head as he really crashes to the ground. And that, that really does smart a little bit, but uh, he likes it. And the winners, nonetheless, were San Diego with Darty and Hermes to pick up 5,000 uh, for the MetLife Star Shoot winners. The first ones, and their coach also, by the way, gets uh, a free trip somewhere. And we're back now. We're going to be uh, talking with the commissioner of the Major Indoor Soccer League, Bill Kentling.